Hello, and welcome to the Guildhall UDK tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at putting sounds in your UDK level and making it a lot better. Now I'm just going to start out by showing you a level. This was a quick level I made in UDK. It's just simple two rooms connected with a hallway. I'm sure you're very familiar with it at this point. Now I'm just going to quickly jump into my level just so you can see what it's like. This level has no sounds other than the basic ones that start in it. As you can see, there's uh, no sounds. You can hear my footsteps. It sounds like a gun made. But other than that, it feels kind of empty. So uh, let's close out of that. Now I'm going to show you another level. This is the same exact map, but uh, this one has sounds, and I, it's going to take a little longer to build here. But uh, as you can already hear in the background, that's just some of the wind playing, and we'll get into that more later. Now, as you can see, right from the bat, we have this wind coming around here. It kind of gives it a bit more atmosphere. And uh, if we walk, we see there's a little stereo system. You can hear some music coming, but it's a bit muffled. But uh, as I get closer, the music gets louder and clearer. So this is all real simple stuff. Uh, this is all real simple stuff, but uh, it really helps your levels, it brings out that immersion value, and uh, frankly your players are going to be happier. So let's just close this project. Get back to here. So uh, sounds are very easy to use, and uh, we're going to start by teaching you how to incorporate your own sounds into the program, and that's very easy to do. First thing you're going to do is want to open up your uh, content browser located right up here. Just hit that open. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do to import your own sounds is, of course, hit the import button located in the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm just going to hit that. Now, assuming you have your own sounds, you just need to make sure of two things. The first thing, make sure that you're always using WAV files. WAV files are the only type of sound files that uh, UDK will recognize, and anything else will really mess it up. The second thing you got to make sure is that whatever you name your file, it has no spaces in it, because UDK will have trouble recognizing those as well, and it will cause your system to crash. So uh, I have a little test file here called UDK Tutorial Radio. Just here just to show you how to do it. I'll click that and I'll hit the open button. Now uh, I'm sure if you've ever imported anything into UDK, you're very familiar with this screen. The package information is going to be where your thing is located. It's always good if you're importing your own things to give your own package name. So uh, I'll just call this test package right here group well this is a sound file so normally I'd leave it blank for something it's very small but I'll just call it sounds just for good measure and the name I'll keep it as UDK tutorial now you have all these options here and for the most part these are all things you can edit later and they're relatively unimportant so we, we can all skip that and just hit the OK button give it some time and there it is UDK uh, tutorial radio now you'll notice it's going to be called a sound node wave now if you want to know what a sound node wave is, if you click on the all type section and you scroll down to where it starts saying sounds, here we go. Sound node waves can be set found here in sound wave data. Now a sound node wave basically means this is a pure wave file. So all sounds will originate from sound node waves in UDK in some form or another. Now we're going to be talking pretty much about sound node waves today and also something called sound cues, which is located up here. Uh, check it. Now sound cues are a little bit more complicated, so for now we're going to just talk about sound node waves. So we'll go back to here, and uh, actually I'll close this out for now. Let's take a look at this level. Now it's pretty much a very simple level, but one thing we can notice is that there are all these vents located all throughout the level. So uh, the one thing that would really help is the sound of wind blowing through the vents. I know they're not animating, but frankly wind can uh, always help any type of level. So I'm going to go back out to the content browser. And I'm going to type in the filter up here, wind. Let's see what we get. We get a bunch of different sounds. UK pro always provides you with uh, lots of different great uh, assets. And uh, I'm going to test out this sound right here. Now you can test out any sound uh, just by double clicking it. So let's test out Air Window 1. And to stop it, you just right click and hit stop sound. There you go. And that sounds perfectly fine to me, so we're going to use that. Now we're just going to click that, select it, and close out of here. And we're just going to right click anywhere in our world and go to Add Actors. And as you imagine, it's just like adding in any other actor. 
Now, there are several different types of sounds. They're all listed as ambient sounds. Now, I'll just go in reverse order. The ones that you can use for sound node waves include sound simple toggleable, meaning using Kismet, you can uh, turn the sound on and off. There's sound non-loop, meaning your sound will play once as soon as it's declared to play, and that's it. And then sound simple, in which case, it'll just play as a continuous loop playing in the background. Since this is going to be wind, we may as well keep it as a sound simple. So you can already hear it playing. So uh, just so you can hear me better, I'm going to turn the sound off. And you'll also notice that this little speaker appeared. Ran it down. Now I'm going to go to my top-down view for a minute and uh, zoom out and select the speaker. And... Uh, here it is located in the map. Now you may notice these two rings that are around it, so I'd like to explain those rings real quick. Now, these are your sound rings, and they work as follow. If you are inside this middle ring right here, you're going to hear whatever sound you have at 100% volume capacity. And if you stand outside the secondary ring right here, you're going to hear it at zero capacity. But if you hear any, if you stand anywhere in between, you're going to hear it at a uh, different sound depending on how close you are to the center. The set closer you are to the center, the louder it's going to be. And uh, this is frequently, you can change it, and it's called attenuation. So uh, we'll get more into that later. But uh, I, as you can see, I placed it in the center of the map, and this inner ring is covering the entire map. And since I want pretty much this sound to be heard from everywhere at equal volume, that's perfect. But uh, just in case you did want to customize it, that's very easy. Just like any other actor, you can select its properties. You can double click it, right click it, and uh, go to properties. Or in my favorite, I just like to hit F4. And here you go. So uh, the first property is like I mentioned, attenuation. And uh, if you turn this off, it's not going to attenuate anymore. Spatialize just uh, makes it so that the sound is absorbed more equally, equally throughout your entire level. Uh, these are really important. Radius, min, and max are important though. These determine how big those rings are. So my, uh, as you can see right now, my uh, inner ring is at around 2,000 and my outer ring is around 5,000. So if I were to go change my outer ring to let's say 3,000, it shrinks instantly if you saw right there. So uh, just in case you didn't see it, one more time, I'm gonna change it. I'll make it a little bigger this time. So I'll make it 4,000. And there, once again, it got bigger. Now, uh, low pass filter is something interesting, and you're going to see that a lot here. Low pass filter means that basically when you hear it from farther distances, not only will it get quieter, but it'll sound a little bit more muffled. Now, once again, I pretty much want to keep it so that uh, you can hear this crisp and clear anywhere, but if I wanted to change it, these would be the numbers, and it works exactly the same way as uh, attenuation. The only downside is you can't really see it, you can't really get a visual grab. You can't visually see it like you can with attenuation, so it's kind of something you have to guess and check. Now modulation, if you're familiar with any type of uh, recording technology, this is pretty standard. You can change the pitch, the pitch here and you can change the volume. Now when it says pitch min and max and volume min and max, that means that your sound's going to fluctuate over the course of a time and it's going to fluctuate between these two pitches and between these two min and maxes. So that's all you really need to know. That those are all the basics for having your ambient sounds. So we can go and I'm going to go test this level now. I'm going to put the sound back up. As you can see, now there's some wind blowing and that was relatively painless. Now we still have this big radio thing and uh, every radio needs music. So why don't we go and uh, during this next half of the video, I'll teach you about sound cues and how you can use it to make some really interesting customizable sounds. So I'll see you in a little bit and thanks for coming by.